It's time once again for another BattleBots review. Oh my god, we're actually on time this time. Let's do this! We got another epic intro this time with Chris Rose as we are now in the round of 16! Again, BattleBots, when they want to be, they are so great at setting the scene for an extremely hyped event. Again, the fight just led me so excited. Hydra vs Whiplash, Sawblaze vs Monsoon, and quite literally every robot in this are robots that could go the distance under the right circumstances. Now the first fight was Ribot vs Black Dragon. This fight I knew could get unbelievably close. Both are robots that can be quite robust and have decently powerful weapons, but I definitely lent more towards Black Dragon heading into this one. Ribot came out with two long hardy forks to help assist with getting under Black Dragon, and thank you Ribot, Finally, you've got symmetrical forks! Black Dragon similarly has some nice long looking forks with wider bases at the bottom. I also noticed what I believe were two smaller forks on Black Dragon, but I could be wrong there. The match begins and they meet in the middle, clashing weapons with Black Dragon getting the better of the initial exchange, but Ribot then gets some almighty hits in return, ripping off one of Black Dragon's forks. Black Dragon does manage to recover, but Ribot refuses to let up. Despite one of their forks being broken, they're able to deform Black Dragon's other fork and keep the aggression going. Black Dragon then loses one half of their drive, but they are trying their best to keep the fight going, making it so Ribot has to go all out if they want to win. With another hit, Black Dragon lands on Ribot's tyre, causing them to get stuck for a moment, but it's clear from this moment that Black Dragon's drive is gone! Black Dragon has received its second career KO in this fight against Ribot. Now this was a fun opening fight and while I am sad to see Black Dragon exit here, I am extremely happy to see Ribot's redemption arc in this season, with its most recent performances being excellent. Next up we had Lockjaw vs Witch Doctor. Now these are two classic reboot battle bots in my opinion. Witch Doctor and Lockjaw are iconic robots to this decade of the show. To me, Witch Doctor immediately had the advantage due to the power and reliability being more certain to me than it is with Lockjaw. But I knew that Donald Hudson and the team are never ones to be underestimated and could absolutely have pulled out a major shocker. Now the fight begins and the two hold out as they exchange blows, but soon Witch Doctor ends up taking off one of Lockjaw's tyres and then kills Spitfire by throwing Lockjaw into them. That's gotta be un a unique way of taking out a drone. Witch Doctor then rips off the weapon belt of Lockjaw and Lockjaw is done. I remember reading a comment on one of my reviews about how Mike Gillately isn't aggressive enough and, and Mike must have heard this comment coming from the future because my goodness, they went all in on this. Going after Lockjaw for one more almighty shot the moment the pulverizer lifted off. Now, like I thought, Witch Doctor is just overall more reliable than Lockjaw, and Witch Doctor is still just one of the top robots in the competition. It's just such an amazingly built robot, and clearly that brushless system is helping keep them at pace with the competition. Now, of course, Lockjaw is an amazing robot in its own right, but I think it's clear to see that there are definitely some issues that are holding it back from being able to progress further. But saying that, a robot that can make it to the round of 16, regardless of any issues, that's a dang good robot. Like, we can critique Lockjaw all we want. It got into the round of 16. It's one of the top robots in the sport, clearly. Next up was Minotaur versus Malice and poor Malice. It's genuinely an actually decent robot. Like, this is a robot that can take out some hefty competition but I could tell before the fight even started that Malice would be in major trouble against a raging bull that is Minotaur. Still, Bunny apparently tried to keep summoning major championship energy, not only having Ray alongside them, but apparently getting advice from Bite Force's Paul Ventimiglia. While I don't rate Bunny's chances, the passion that she has shown helping out with Robo Games you know, having Ray Billings and Paul Ventimiglia you know, for advice and support. You know, I like Bunny's passion for robot combat. It's genuinely so much fun to see. They elected this time as well to not go for the forks with Malice as they decided to go with their hardiest spinner in a hope that they may be able to survive going weapon to weapon, which 
On paper, I completely understand, and it's probably their best strategy. But in reality... Maybe there wasn't Minotaur? <laughs> now the fight begins and both robots are slow out of the box as they get up to speed, with Malice actually getting the better of the first three shots, as Minotaur was stuck upside down for a bit, unable to get their better shots in, especially as Malice chased them down. Still, once Minotaur was back, they got some good shots in return, before it seemed for a brief moment that Minotaur's weapon had died. But as if it sucked the life out of Malice, when Malice's weapon died, Minotaur sprung back to life. When we got a closer look, the teeth that gave Malice the damage dealing potential in that spinner had been ripped out by Minotaur, so I'm not shocked that Malice's spinner had died. Saying that Minotaur's drum isn't at 100% either, as it, is go as it isn't going into full death hum mode, but between the pins, the small hits they manage, and pushing Malice around, it is keeping that aggression on. Malice, however, is refusing to let up. In this moment, aggression is all they really have. They cannot afford to let up in this late stage. But Minotaur is making it clear that they are walking away with the victory as it goes to the judges. The judges of course give it to Minotaur, and again this one was fun! We got to see Malice do shockingly well, I guarantee many expected this to be a quick win for Minotaur, but for a brief moment, I thought we were about to see a major upset, as Malice had a brilliant fight with Minotaur, who of course soon came back with their reliable performance, which we've come to love from Minotaur. It's why they are a favourite of mine heading into the grand final. Now we go from one amazing drum spinner to another as it's Copperhead versus Endgame. Copperhead has had their best performance to date, but for similar reasons to the last fight, I just felt that they didn't stand a chance against the former champions. Endgame this time went for four forks this time amongst their setup as opposed to the usual two, as they clearly want to leave nothing for chance to get a quick victory. You know, they may be former champions, but Copperhead has clearly proven itself to be quite a formidable force. As the buzzer sounds, both robots are slow coming out as they begin spinning up, and of course, Endgame easily gets under, hitting Copperhead repeatedly with some major blows, but thanks to Copperhead's hardier front, they're able to bounce back like it's nothing. Copperhead then begins ripping off a fork, and soon, Endgame spinner dies! Cophead keeps ripping off the piano keys and the forks, until Endgame is essentially just a box, with no weapon, just a four-wheel drive, and as I mentioned before, uh, you know they may have pretty good drive, but a box is not very good at pushing. We've seen that in Series One of Robot Wars with Robot the Bruce. We've seen that with, you know, like Bullion in Robo Games. A box just cannot outpush a wedge, or in this case, Copperhead. Endgame with no weapon at all. All they can do is survive as Copperhead keeps ripping into them as they try to rely on the strategy of breaking Copperhead's fist with its face. A strat we basically saw Copperhead do just now to Endgame, enduring until they broke Endgame's spinner down. Now Endgame is hanging by a thread the entire fight, the drive is still going strong, but with no weapon and no wedge, there's simply nothing they could do, and eventually they end up tipped onto their spinner and are only saved by the 3 minutes being up before a KO countout. Had this happened a little earlier, this would have ensured a KO victory for Copperhead. But still it goes to the judges and in a surprise to no one now, but as a surprise to everyone I imagine when the buzzer first sounded, Copperhead wins! Copperhead's reliability is all in that front as we got to see in this fight. Had Endgame gotten lucky like Ripperoni, I'm sure we'd have gotten a different result, but we're seeing how Copperhead's hardy, reliable design has gotten them so far here in taking out a former champ. That has got to be the biggest victory of Copperhead's run at least so far. Next up we got Sawblaze vs Monsoon, and this fight had the potential to be legendary. If Monsoon got a well placed shot in, they were one of the few robots I could see potentially knocking out Sawblaze, but that requires taking out the exceptionally well driven and extremely low and well designed Sawblaze, who has only gotten so much better since their last encounter. The fight starts and they rush forward to the middle and exchange shots as Sawblaze gets a blow on Monsoon before Monsoon sends Sawblaze up high. Monsoon is keeping Sawblaze under a lot of pressure, but Sawblaze sends Monsoon into the screws repeatedly as Monsoon ends up chewing one of the eyelashes. This is a situation where Sawblaze cannot afford to make any mistakes 
and luckily for them, disaster struck for the Monsoon, who got caught on the kill source slots, allowing Sawblaze to take out one of the top forks. Monsoon's bar then hits the arena, and while they did a number to one of the hardiest parts of the wall, the spinner ended up dying as a result, which Sawblaze capitalises on by knocking them onto their spinner where they are counted out. Honestly, this fight was really good, honestly, with some amazing power from Monsoon and some incredible tension, and the fight kept swinging around as at any moment, Monsoon could have taken the KO victory, but ultimately, the incredible driving by Jameson Go, undoubtedly one of the best drivers in Battlebots history, secured them that victory. Sawblaze is always so much fun to watch Go, and I just had a lot of fun with this fight. Then we had Hydra vs Whiplash, and again, this could have been an incredible fight, but one that I was definitely leaning more towards Hydra on. Whiplash was clearly back in a major way, but Hydra is so scarily efficient that I didn't know if it would be able to stop Jake Hewitt. Hydra and Whiplash once again take a bit of time coming out, though Hydra more so as it kept catching the floor seams, and Whiplash had a very strong strategy as they tried to bait Hydra out to get a flip in at the wrong time so they could take advantage. Of course, if Hydra misses a flip, they get popped up slightly, which then would guarantee Whiplash could get under. But they just didn't get a whole lot in when they did, besides a quick lift, as Jake then starts flipping them about. And for a moment, it looked like Whiplash's spinner had died, but it seems it was more of a case of a piece of armour getting in the way, which Whiplash easily smacks away. Unfortunately for Whiplash, the problems kept coming as their lifting arm broke down, which I didn't even realise until Hydra flipped them over and Whiplash was stuck! I can't believe it! Whiplash was counted out as Hydra would join the rest in the round of eight. My goodness, a bit disappointing in the ending, but with two great robots like this, it was always going to be very close. Next up, we had the hugely anticipated HUGE versus Mad Catter. Mad Catter came out with a huge poon, a spike to catch the gaps in Huge's wheels, which is undoubtedly the best option they have, as where they're most likely able to break Huge is in those wheels, as they're quite low down, and Huge is almost perfect for dealing with that kind of design. At the same time, it was also something I was worried about, as the Huge Poon was also looked like it was perfect to get eaten up by Huge's monster bar spinner. Mad Catter came out in the fight with sparks flying everywhere, it looked like Destructifon all of a sudden, and the Huge Poon immediately is ripped off, at least I think that was the Huge Poon? But Mad Catter then comes back with some nasty shots in return, even ripping off a piece of Huge's wheel. After some weapon exchanges, however, some that flipped Mad Catter over, Mad Catter's spinner broke down. Mad Catter keeps the pressure on as they try to gum up the spinner, but they are just being torn apart by Huge's almighty spinning bar. Eventually, once they rip off the lifting arm, Huge's bar then breaks down as well. It does show a brief bit of life, but it's clearly not an option anymore, as it was not doing well at all, and in that moment, this fight suddenly became a lot more uncertain, as Huge can't do a lot to Mad Catter, as Mad Catter keeps on them, though aren't able to do a lot of substantial aggression either. The fight goes the distance, and the judges have to decide what is to me an extremely difficult to judge battle. Huge did spin up the weapon right at the very end to show that it did still work, even if not as well as before. Now that, I have to imagine, helped seal the deal for Huge as they win the judge's decision and move on. Then it's time for the main event! Hypershock vs Riptide! Shockingly, they left the hype package for right before the fight. I didn't expect that, but clearly they are just so much more confident in their fights this time, and I guess didn't feel the need to try and prompt the audience to stay tuned this time. The hype package does have Ethan going fuck the haters, but that's about as deep as it goes. Thankfully, there's no real drama. Now, I'll admit that I had no real hope for Hypershock heading into this one. It's good, don't get me wrong, but given how Hypershock generally doesn't handle being flipped over, I felt like a fight against Riptide was never going to go well for Will Bales and the team. Now the fight begins and Hypershock races over, but immediately they make a major mistake as they are flipped right over. And then, as with as they mentioned, with Hypershock spinner spinning down and Riptide spinning up, 
they get the ultimate fight, sending Riptide up into the ceiling! Now this is, I believe, the second time that a robot has hit the modern battle box ceiling. Apparently Hydra managed to dent the ceiling with death roll, which is incredible. But now we've had the first time with a spinner on spinner collision. This is incredible. We are seeing power from flippers and spinners that we have never seen before in battle bots. This is genuinely unprecedented. Now Hypershock actually does keep going, but Riptide rips off two of Hypershock's tires. And honestly, it's an absolute slaughter as Hypershock keeps going, refusing to back down, and actually does get some nice shots in, but it's nothing compared to the hell being brought by Riptide. And finally, Hypershock dies from the terrifying punishment from Riptide's Egg Beater. I will say this was actually a really exciting main event. Thankfully, this had no real drama as it was just two amazing verts killing each other. As far as I can tell, there wasn't any noticeable bad blood. Uh, and honestly, that was legendary, that shot. Like, even if you're sad that Riptide won, if you look at that moment, that is incredible. That, that's one of the most iconic moments of the season, in my opinion. Now, Battlebots, I know what you were doing. No, no, don't try and play dumb. Earlier in the episode, you were framing Will Bales watching on to be because of Riptide's reputation. But we have seen plenty of instances of people watching their opponents in the test box. I understand Riptide is a good bit of drama fodder, but please don't try to force rage views. This fight's great enough, it doesn't need the attempt to get more drama. Riptide's pretty good at doing that anyway, <laughs> let's be real. Like, to me, it does. It wasn't necessary. I, you know, I'm just, that's just my point of view. Anyway, before we end off, we have the road to the giant nut. First up, we had an endgame botopsy with Endgame coming out with a bucket full of parts, but the base bot actually looks surprisingly in good shape. It's a little twisted and chewed up, sure, but, you know, given the abuse they took throughout the fight, you'd expect it to be a lot worse, and the Endgame team have taken the destruction of their bot very well. Likely, as they said internally, it still works, actually, but just externally it took some hefty damage. It really is a sight to behold, and it only gets better when we get to see how tight and compact all the internals are. Endgame is such a well-built robot, it's, it's no wonder that they managed to win the giant nuts at one point. That, that you know, it's just so well-built. Now, in a surprise twist, Will Bales actually comes out as we get two bot topsies in one night, as we get to see a scrap heap, uh, I, I mean Hypershock, carted out. Shockingly, it, again, isn't that badly mangled, all things considered. I, I mean, it's mangled. Let's, 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 not be, let's not beat around the bush. That thing looks torn up, but not as badly as I would imagine from that fight. I was expecting to see a vertical spinner version of Captain Shredderator after that fight, but, you know, you can still recognize it. <laughs> That's at least better than Shredderator. The Endgame and Hypershock teams discuss the future of the meta how Forks might be slowly being taken out by the big wide weapons like Minotaur, Copperhead, and Riptide. And Will voices how he hopes something new comes in to shake things up, or as he says, pee in the punch bowl. Of course, I'm always hoping to see shakeups to the meta, but I think that would require Verts to get a small nerf or something, and a more significant development to be done by a non-spinner team. Now, we're seeing that with the likes of Claw Viper, Quantum, Beta, like, you know, Shatter, these are robots that have managed to, you know, pull off surprisingly well these alternative designs. And as we've seen in the meta of BattleBots, these things can shift and change all the time. You know, at one point Tombstone was the ultimate dominant meta because it was just so powerful that most robots weren't able to handle it, and some robots still can't. Then of course there was the low to the ground vertical spinner which we saw Bite Force and Endgame really prove was very good and in a sense Tantrum as well though it did it in its own unique way. But we've been seeing you know with the likes of Minotaur and Riptide and in Robo Games with Manta that you know wider robots with these big spinners are actually quite devastating to go up against and have consistently proven to be robots that could actually go the distance. It's hard to say for certain, but 
It's absolutely a type of design that I could see winning a giant nut in the future, if not this time around. I mean, robots like Riptide have to be... I mean, robots like Riptide and Minotaur have to be favourites to win the whole thing now. But, with designs like Sawblaze, Huge, uh, Hydra, you know, there are alternative designs, spinner and non-spinner, that could still shake things up. And that's what I love to see about the sh BattleBots meta. You know, there's always going to be a design that ends up winning overall, but sometimes that design shifts ever so slightly, and even then, even if you have a favourite heading into it, it could always get outsmarted by something that's not a meta design. Or at least, not a giant nuts winning meta design. And I'll always be happy to see how BattleBots is never a certain thing. Like, even if you've got a design that's seemingly perfect, anything can happen, and sometimes underdog stories get told. Now, the final bit of the bot road to the giant nut involved Jake Ewart and Ethan Kurtz, and they start off talking about the power of Riptide Spinner. And you have Jake taking some of Ethan's thunder by pointing out that he hit a robot in the ceiling first. You know, Jake definitely admits that Riptide is powerful, but manages to keep that cool swagger about him as he said that he'll just have to beat Riptide in the final. It, it would be a tough fight, but definitely a lot of fun. Though, I probably would be leaning more towards Riptide, because Hydra's armor... Mm, look, I like Hydra. Its armor is pretty flimsy against spinners, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ethan and Jake both are confident, but actually quite reasonable in this. There's no excess trash talk in this segment. Knowing that their fights won't be easy, but they're ready to give it their all to get to that giant nut. I won't go too in-depth again, as the road to the giant nut I think is fun to check out and wind down after some of the intense fights we've seen this season. Now overall, this was another exciting episode. This had the same perks of the first round of 32 episode in having pretty much every fight being exciting, with the extra bonus of no real drama bogging things down. I will say I had been banking on Endgame being the robot to take out Riptide, which I gotta say I'm a little concerned, I don't know what's gonna stop Riptide getting to the giant nuts. You know, maybe Copperhead can pull off another upset? Uh, you know what? Uh, anything's possible, like I was just saying earlier, you can have an upset for sure. But, you know, right now I'd say Riptide is definitely going to be a lot of people's favourites heading into next week's episode. But that's what's so exciting. Th th this is truly incredible. Some of the designs we've seen getting this far, like, and it's made for some absolutely incredible fights since the round of 32. Of course, not every fight's going to be a winner before the round of 32. But, like, man, there, there's been very few disappointing fights now that we've managed to narrow it down to the absolute best that BattleBots has to offer. And I, and I am so excited to see who finally gets to hold aloft the giant nut in next week's episode, and I hope you are as well. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this review. If you did, please be sure as always to leave a like on this video. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos on the channel. I do reviews, I try to experiment with other content, and I stream on occasion, so you'll be able to check those out. And if you can share this video around, as would be extra appreciated because it gets more eyes on the channel. No matter what you do, your support is always appreciated. With that being said, I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!